Hello everyone, for first updates now, I'm Tyler Rolds and you're watching Behind the Bumpers. It's a fun show where we dive deep into robots in the FRC community. And I'm here today with team number 6479, Aztec Robotics from Tepe, Arizona. Starting in 2017, Aztec has their most notable season back in 2019, winning the Arizona West Regional and a Creativity Award as well. Their 2020 season was cut a bit short, but they did have a playoff berth at the Del Mar Regional. And today I'm here with Luke, Tatset, and Leo, and we're going to be talking more about uh, their 2020 bot, how it's been integrated for 2021, some of their programming, and we'll even show off some of their CAD designs all coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. fun. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumpers segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. So Luke, you have here your 2020 robot that you've done some modifications on uh, for 2021. And I know we'll be talking about uh, some of the things uh, you have any more uh, that you're going to be showing off some CAD for, but uh, start, it through, start us through, I know you want to talk a little bit about your drive train, and then we're going to go through the full power cell journey of your robot as well. Sure. So down here we have our West Coast custom drive train. We run it at a 7.33 to one gear ratio. And that gets us about 16 feet per second, which is perfect for being a cycle bot. And so we run in between the trench zone and to the loading station. And then speaking of the loading station over here, we have our intake. And so balls will come up. If you want to throw some balls over here so you can kind of see how it works. All right, so you can see balls kind of come up here. We have this our surgical tubing wrapped around one of our rollers just to add a little bit more compression. And this is ran at a four to one gear ratio, kind of giving a little bit of torque and able to get the balls all up and in there. And then the balls are kind of directed over here to this Omni wheel. And so down there we can have, we have a 775 uh, running the Omni wheel and this will shoot up balls into our shooter. And so Pat said, you can go ahead and tell them a little bit about our shooter. All right, yeah. So the shooter is really the centerpiece of the entire robot. What you have here is, and this is the main component that we actually altered between years. What you have here are two Falcon 500s. They're on an abduction 36 to 30 uh, HTD belt right there powering four inch fair lane wheels uh, and then on top you have uh two neo 550s uh this is a two to one abduction again here powering two uh two inch fair lane wheels as well now the reason we have this uh, top wheel is actually for uh increasing accuracy as well as preventing an rpm drop because that those were two problems that we had from last year was that when we had 775s powering just the regular two four inch fair lane wheels, they tend to, first of all, overheat, which we managed to remedy with the Falcon 500s, they don't overheat at all. And they also had an RPM drop and uh, also an accuracy issue, which we were able to remedy with the two, four, two, two inch fair lane wheels. Tessa, let me just ask you a couple things on there. Um, so I really like how you you mentioned uh, that the reason why you added the top ones, because I was going to ask about that, if that was just for more distance or not, but that makes a lot of sense uh, in regards to uh, making sure your RPM stays more consistent as well, too. Um, so on your hood there, how many different positions are you able to do? I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's infinite, right? But how many do you have like programmed in for your, your shooter? And then what distances are you able to shoot from as well? Right. So we have... Uh... I like six uh, major positions here that we can actually lock into uh, with bolts. Those are the ones that we mainly programmed for. It is obviously passively adjustable, 3D printed uh, between matches. Uh, the reason it's passively adjustable is because, you know, active adjustment uh, wasn't really worth it uh, for us given the, uh, given our strategy sure. and sure. given the, you know, the time investment and all that. And so the passively adjustable hood allows us to have infinite flexibility in terms of, all right, we don't need necessarily have enough time to prototype uh, given the conditions. So we, by having this passively adjustable hood, we're able to increase our flexibility and get a little bit more accuracy with our shots. Uh, Leo can talk a little bit more about the actual distance in which you can shoot from. Sure. Before we do that, um, I want to focus a little bit more on when you mentioned the passively adjusting on there. So just to clarify on that, so you're actually setting the hood position before a match starts and then it's not adjusted afterwards. Is that correct? Right. We adjust between matches. Sure. 
So um, what what is your typical one that you shoot from or like which one do you usually have it on and what distance is that from? So usually this is at about uh, basically what, what you see right here. Uh, in terms of distance, we shoot from uh, just, just past the trench zone itself. Sure. Um, and then I also, if you don't mind, I do want to bring Luke back in here. Just a question on the uh, the intake uh, area as well, too. So uh, one of one of the things I'm always concerned with when I see very open hoppers like that is that uh, power cells are going to pop out. Now you just we just saw you intake a whole bunch, and none of them popped out at all. So how did you get it to where they, they none of them really were popping out? Or you know, if you guys get hit while you're carrying some, have some popped out for you at all? Uh, occasionally they do pop out, but generally we kind of mess around with the height of actually this polycarb. That wraps around it and it's kind of a great height uh, the kind of idea with this robot is to kind of keep away from the defense as much as possible because we're going from the loading station and then to the other safe zone which is in the trench and so generally we're not getting a lot of defense because we don't actually need to go in a lot of areas where there's a lot of defense uh, to be played but generally it's pretty good obviously a couple balls will hop in and out but it's obviously worth it if we're able to uh, drop balls in from the loading station and can we see a few of the power shells uh, shot out of the robot just so we can see how that whole transfer yeah, process course. works? Yep. So first we have to lock on with the limelight. And let's stick, let's stick with the robot here. I want to see how that power cell goes all the way through. Yep. And so sometimes we need to bring the intake a little bit in. Uh, because the balls will kind of get stuck in this area. So one of our adjustments was going to make this whole intake out of pneumatics. And you might see that a little bit later, but uh, with this high gear ratio, so it's at a 300 to 1, so it goes in a little bit slow. Uh, we don't run into a lot of defense, so we don't need to bring it in as much. But generally, uh, we were planning on adding pneumatics just to be a little bit faster. So that's one of the things that we uh, would have changed. And, and Luke, looking at the 2021 at-home challenges uh, for something like this, I know you mentioned a couple modifications you did. Um, is there anything else you've had to majorly modify to accomplish any of the at-home challenges at all? Right. So we basically added everything we wanted to in CAD since we sure. were able to meet in person. Uh, so with the time we had, we basically just added the new shooter. But everything else is essentially what we had in 2020. Um, we might have had to repair a couple things or replace some motors. Obviously, we switched to the Falcons that are a little bit faster. But everything is basically the same. Obviously, there's some things that we would like to change. We wanted to center this whole brought whole uh, robot in the actual turret and add uh, two indexers on either side to kind of bring balls in a little bit faster. Uh, those are the things we're going to change, but we don't have a ton of time to actually do it. Yeah, and so we'll, we'll take a look at that in the CAD as well, too. So I'm looking forward yes. to seeing that, which we'll see in just a little bit. But before that, let's head over to Lee, who's going to be talking a little bit more about the uh, programming on the robot, uh, using the limelight, of course, I see on there, and any other sensors or features you want to mention as well, too, Leo. Yeah, so we have a limelight right here, a fully integrated vision platforms, and we've tuned that for the lighting here in our shop. And so this we use to lock the turret onto the target. And so even during teleop, it's autonomously aligning with the target in order to just take a lot of load off of the driver so that they don't have to worry about manually aligning the turret because that is pretty difficult from our testing. This also will calculate the distance between the robot and the target. And so that kind of leads me into how we shoot the balls and how we calculate the speed for these flywheels. And so what we originally tried to do is use a lot of equations and physics and that kind of thing to determine how fast we needed to spin the flywheels to hit the target but we found that that doesn't work very well. And we actually saw some other teams last year that tried to do that and didn't have much success. And so what we're doing instead is we're actually, we collected a lot of empirical data. So we would basically take the robot to a certain position and kind of manually input some flywheels or some flywheel speeds, find one that works, and then put that all into a regression equation and we would use that to calculate. You can kind of see a sketch here of the equations that we're using for the top and bottom flywheel speeds. So we'll find different, or during a match, the 
limelight will calculate the distance to the target, and then it'll use that distance, plug it into one of those equations, and it will set the top and bottom flywheel speeds. And then we can retune it like that for any of the angles that we want to use. We have found from our testing that kind of this angle, how we keep it normally, is pretty good for really anywhere from kind of up here all the way to where we would normally shoot it kind of near the trench area. And then to ensure that the flywheels are actually spinning at the correct speed, we use a PID loop that we've tuned for each of them specifically for these motors. And that keeps them running at the correct speed and it makes it more consistent between shots. Yeah, that makes uh, you know makes a lot of sense. A lot of trial and error, obviously, as it goes through uh, on mm -hmm. this. And I appreciate hearing more about how you uh, are tuning for those uh, both the top and the bottom uh, shooter motors as well, too. So very interesting with that. Uh, so we're going to be uh, next. We're actually going to take a look at some of your CAD uh, for some modifications for the 2021 robot. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. This is our uh, planned 2021 CAD sort of full thing, and you can see this uh, shooter right here uh, on the current robot. But the major modifications that we put onto this guy were the addition of a climber. You know, so this is a two uh, telescoping arms powered by uh, a Falcon each. And they would be able to uh, simultaneously ex extend onto the uh, pull-up bar and get up on there in under about five seconds uh, just to extend. And then also on the back here, you have the control panel mechanism. Uh, just another thing that we attached onto there uh, to prove our value. Of course, for given the uh, conditions for 2021 season, both of those are essentially irrelevant, so there's no reason for us to actually construct those. So do you, do you plan on constructing them, though, at this point? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. If, just... there, if there happened to be, like, a state competition or something of that sort, then uh, it's a possibility, but for now, I don't believe we do. Yeah. And just given the uh, rules and the uh, state of the game, there's not much benefit in actually constructing either of those. And then uh, sort of at the front here, you can see the uh, intake system. Now, this is a very similar to the current intake system that's made with uh, this sort of over the bumper style uh, actuation and polycarb. However, the main difference here is that there are three rollers as opposed to two. And what that did for us is these, this extra burst roller actually allowed us to have more control uh, with the robot. So as you saw before, there are, the robots uh, might need to pull the intake in to actually be able to control all of the balls. In this case, that wouldn't actually happen. You would have enough control with just these three burst rollers uh, so that the balls can actually be fed into Another uh, change here, which is this sort of dual V uh, indexing system, as opposed to the one-sided indexing system. Mm -hmm. This is because, of course, we decided to center the shooter to have room for both of the telescoping arms on either side. And so we adjusted accordingly with a dual V indexing system. The real, the only thing that's actually staying the same here is this, uh, this omni wheel, this four-inch omni wheel right in the center to feed the balls into the shooter. So with, you know, with the dual indexing system, the one, one thing they ask about that, is there any concerns with uh, power cells potentially jamming on that, um, especially if you run them around the same speed? Right, so what we can actually do here is that programming can actually move these guys counterclockwise. And with that, it actually means that the dual V is less likely to jam as, uh, as opposed to our current system because we have more flexibility and actuation to actually separate the balls if we need to. We can move them uh, sort of in counter revolution, sort of unjam and move at the same time. And in addition, there's enough space in between here that the balls just aren't very likely to jam uh, according to just our math. And so in the back here, you can see, uh, again, this 
we've, we've made a very big changes to our uh, sort of superstructure that actually holds everything up. Uh, of course, you have the sh uh, shooter here at the top, essentially the same as what you see on the current robot with the, with a, it is important to note, however, that there is slightly less actuation on the turret, uh, just given the uh, line lights flex, uh, ability to see past these uh, climber, mm. climbing uh, arms. So that's sort of the one trade-off that we have here uh, with that. I think that just about covers everything. Yeah, uh, in appreciate, terms of the appreciate you showing change. the uh, robot on here and uh, potential modifications. Do you have a, a timeline of when you think you are going to be able to accomplish uh, the modifications you want to make, at least the, one, uh, the ones that in regards to centering the turret? Is that something you're actually, is a turret uh, switch, is that going to be made uh, actually on the robot or is that just done in CAD? So that will be ultimately decided by if there is a state competition. Okay. If there is, then we would do that so we can add the climber because as you know, the climber is a very important piece uh, in this. In terms of the rest of the robot, we could actually implement the intake uh, rather soon, really. Uh, we have most of the pieces actually already cut out uh, in terms of the polycarb and the plating here. Sure. So the, so the intake is something that you want to make the modification to immediately. Um, the rest of the robot will be dependent on uh, if there's an Arizona State Championship. Is that right? Yes. All right. So Arizona, if you're listening, they want a state championship. Make it happen, all right? So thanks for showing us the uh, the cat on, on this tat set. Uh, really cool to see the uh, changes you're looking at making. Yeah, absolutely. Well, 6479 Aztec Robotics, thank you so much once again for taking the time to show us your 2020 robot, the modifications you made on that, and future modifications uh, through your CAD as well as some programming as well. Uh, wish you best of luck at the at-home challenges, uh, of course, coming up in competitions and uh, throughout the rest of uh, the history of 6479. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you, Tyler. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. You can also directly support Fun by joining Fun Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content.